I think one of my favorite scenes in the movies is from one of the Indiana Jones movies, where we have a cave in which we find the Holy Grail. It is there somewhere on rank upon rank of beautiful chalices on shelves, and one of them is the Holy Grail, the chalice used by the Lord himself at the Last Supper. And the legend goes that if you drink from that, you can have eternal life. And so the villain comes in, the Nazi agent, and he looks at all the chalices and grabs the most beautiful looking one, drinks from it, and there's this marvelous scene where he just shrivels away completely, absolutely, <laughs> just dust on the floor. And my favorite line in all the movies is when the old knight guarding the Holy Grail says simply, he chose poorly. <laughs> he certainly did. But he chose poorly because he did not have a discerning mind and an understanding heart. He chose poorly because he could not decide what is really important. He went for the surface, for the superficial, for the glitter. He obviously did not have a pure heart. And we know from the stories of the traditions of King Arthur, the Holy Grail, that the one who finds the Holy Grail must have a heart that is pure. And of course, the Holy Grail is the Eucharist. And so we need to think about that. In this life, we face many choices, and we hope that no one will say of us on any of our choices, he chose poorly. But we need to choose to see to have what we hear in the first reading is called a discerning mind. With some of the other translations, which actually I think are better, an understanding heart. And we see that as well in the reading, the, the opening prayer, the collect of today's Mass. And we say, grant, O Lord, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. We use the good things that pass, the things we see day by day, parts of our daily life, even now in such a way as to hold fast to the things that endure, to the things which are immortal, which do indeed give immortal eternal life. For that we must have an understanding heart we must have a discerning mind. We must choose rightly. And sometimes our choices are little ones day by day, and sometimes they are great ones that affect our whole life or affect the lives of others. But we pray the Lord, may I choose rightly. May I see what is, even in the things that pass, something that endures forever. How can I know? in the midst of, as that, in the story in the movie, all those glittering chalices, which one is the cup of the carpenter? Which one? And that is sometimes difficult to know. And so the readings today in the Holy Eucharist speak to us of that. How can we learn to choose rightly, to have a discerning heart? We see this certainly in the first reading from the book of Kings, this great account of young Solomon. He had just become king of the nation, enormous power. He was a teenager who was in charge of the whole country. And he was asked by God, ask for something, I'll give it to you, I'll give you something, what would you like? And what he asked for is an understanding heart. Give your servant therefore an understanding mind to govern your people able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? And the Lord says, because you didn't ask for long life or wealth or the defeat of your enemies, I will give you all of that and I will give you great glory so that no one will ever be like you. A discerning mind, the ability to choose rightly amid the many distractions, the glitter of this world, to see with the eyes of faith, to see behind the surface to what really matters, to be able to read the situation, to read people as well, 
to understand and not to make bad decisions. We pray the Lord for that because sometimes it's not so easy. We can get all mixed up. And I think what we see in this first reading is the first requirement of a discerning mind, and that's humility. Young Solomon was a humble young man. He was a wise teenager. And he asked for, he knew he was frail. Who am I to rule this nation? So he asked for the ability to do, act rightly. Now, there's a bad, sad side to this story, I'm afraid. As Solomon got older and richer and more powerful and more dominant and everyone was bowing before him, his heart hardened on him. And he was overtaken by lust and pride. And as an old man, he was a fool, like King Lear out on the, the heath. But as a young man, he was wise. And maybe that's a reminder to all of us never to take, getting older doesn't make us wiser. It just gives us more experience. What matters is do we have a discerning heart? And very often, those who are younger are wiser than they are when they get older. But what is needed is humility and understanding. The second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans from the great chapter 8, which speaks of life in the Spirit. In this, St. Paul speaks to us of the vision of the glory of God, of the plan of God. We who are called according to God's purpose, for those whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that they might be the firstborn among their brothers and sisters. And so what St. Paul asks for here is vision. See our actions in this world in the context of the whole of creation, of history, of God's plan and purpose. In the seventh chapter of the letter of the Romans, he speaks of our frailty. We know what we want to do, we don't. We should do, we don't do, we do the wrong thing, and we're all mixed up. That's the way Solomon got when he got older. But what St. Paul asks for is to have the vision, to be able to make right judgments, because we're doing it in the context of the purpose of God, the plan of God. So that's the second requirement. If we're going to have a discerning mind, to be able to choose rightly, we need to have a sense of the vision of what is really important, of those things that endure forever. And then we will be able to use the things of this world that pass away in a proper way and not worship them as poor Solomon came to do in his later years. In the gospel, how do we choose rightly? We need to have good judgment, humility, vision, and good judgment. We need to know what is and what is not important, and then go for that which is important. That's what we need. We need to be able to set our priorities, to see what matters and what does not. And so, if there's a treasure in the field, we buy the field and go for that treasure. If we have a pearl of great price, we need to get that pearl of great price, which is the kingdom of God. Let's set our hearts on that and not on things that are not of value. And then we will be able to act wisely and rightly, even if we go against what this world asks for. I think here of the great St. Thomas More, who had all the money and power and all those other things, but he chose the kingdom of God. And therefore he was able to, he could not be bribed and he could not be threatened because he could discern Yet what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his immortal soul? We need to know what really matters, and let's put our energy, our time, our life into that. That's the pearl of great price. That is the kingdom of God. And at the end of our life, whenever it may be, who knows when it will be, we want to have lived a life rightly, to have chosen rightly and not to have wasted our precious time of which there is not an infinite supply on things that are not worthwhile, that are just dust and ashes and pebbles and not the pearl of great price. And so we should think about that as we 
celebrate the Holy Eucharist today. We must choose wisely. And we don't have much time to do it, no matter what our age is. We need to choose wisely how to spend our time, how to spend our energy, what to devote ourselves to day by day in the little choices we make and in the great ones we make. We need a discerning mind, an understanding heart like young Solomon. And then we will be able to navigate our way through the things that pass to the world that endures, which is the kingdom of God and its fulfillment in the heavenly city, Jerusalem, in the home of our heavenly father, which is our destiny. We're just passing through. We're just staying overnight in a motel here. This isn't home. We're just passing through. We got to know how to get where we're meant to go. And for that, we need humility. That's what Solomon didn't have at the end. So we should get the confession and regularly pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner, and learn from our mistakes, because we all make lots of them. Say, Lord, you know, I wish I'd made a better decision. Learn from our mistakes and humbly say, Lord, help me to move on and to, to act rightly and to be wiser, be wiser. And we need to have vision. And that's why we need to spend time in prayer and reading of the sacred scriptures, which show us the vision. And we need to have right judgment to know what really matters. And what really matters is the Holy Grail. And the Holy Grail is not ultimately the cup of the Last Supper, which those Catholics who wrote at the time of the Arthurian legends knew what it was. It's the Holy Eucharist. Who needs the chalice of the Last Supper when you have the body and blood of Christ? The Holy Grail is here. This is the pearl of great price. This is the treasure in the field. This is everything. This is the foretaste of the kingdom of heaven in its fulfillment. This is it. This is the real thing. And so a discerning mind will recognize that. This is the still point of our revolving lives. The word of the Lord that speaks to us in the liturgy of the reading sent the Lord himself who comes here as he did the Last Supper, as he will invite us to the heavenly banquet. Here he is, it is the Lord. This is the Holy Grail, infinitely more important than a chalice. And we, like those wise searchers of old, must bend our hearts and minds toward it and recognize in this that which is the pearl of great price.